The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Cowboys Storyline. It is Tuesday, January the 30th, and it's time to talk more Cowboys. Uh, obviously, we know the teams in the Super Bowl and not really a huge surprise. I mean, obviously, the, the 49ers have been one of the best teams all year. Uh, yeah, the Chiefs um, struggled some some point in the in regular season, but uh, they, they always had Mahomes, and they always have Andy Reid and Kelsey and that group, and you never count them out, and they uh, look, look where they are. And it should be uh, a, a fun Super Bowl. Obviously, from the Cowboys' perspective, uh, you look at it and you go, well, why not us? Again, why not? Uh, why couldn't this team get there, get get over the, the top? And do you look at the championship games and the divisional rounds and see things among those teams? And, you know, I, I, I do, actually. I see some ability to run the football and, and, and the toughness that I think the Cowboys still need to kind of get to that level. I'm not saying they're not tough, but they got to be tougher than, than what we've seen, especially in the trenches on both sides of the ball. We've talked about it, and I'm sure we'll talk about it some more. Um Right now, the at the the two All Star games going on. One of them here at, at the start of the East West Shrine game for the first time is in Frisco. I've seen some players on the field. We've been able to watch some of the practices, and in Mobile, Alabama, as uh, the Senior Bowl going on as well. And it's kind of a, a new year uh, in uh, uh, college All Star games. Would now allowing the juniors to play if they if they want to play in these games, and that's something we haven't seen before. So you're seeing juniors at the Senior Bowl. Uh, it's just uh, that's the way it is. Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones are down in Mobile. I know Nick Harris was there uh, among some of the reporters talking to Jerry and Stephen just now. So uh, go back to the website, DallasCowboys.com. We'll have some stories and updates on that. All right. Uh, also, Pro Bowl news. The Cowboys have three more Pro Bowlers added. Jake Ferguson, Tyler Smith, Demarcus Lawrence, much deserving for them. Cowboys now have 10 Pro Bowlers in the game. Obviously, it's not a game, but 10 uh, selections and uh, Judging by Twitter and, and, and my tweet of it, I, I can tell not a lot of fans care about that, which is fine. You shouldn't really. But, um, you know, from a player standpoint, it's a big deal for those guys. And, you know, to be a four-time Pro Bowler for Demarcus Lawrence is is, is big. It's, and obviously first-timer for uh, Tyler and Jake Ferguson. All right. We are going to the phone lines, 888-855-2297. Joe in Stanford, you've been holding for a while. Appreciate that. Joe, what's up? Hey, morning, brother. Appreciate you. How are you? Um, good, man. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, the further we get away from the game, the less uh, angry I feel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, first, you know, as far as the Super Bowl goals, I, n- none of my teams won. It Usually it's worked out that way for a long time now. Back in the 90s, I was a Bulls and a Cowboys fan. and But since then, every team I root for loses. So uh, I, I'm getting used to it. Um I guess I'm rooting for uh, for Kansas City. Mahomes is a Texan, so yeah. I guess I can go that way with it. Sure. Um, two things real quick. I won't be as long as I was last time. Um, first, um, do you think Trey Lance is going to be our backup? Do you think the Cowboys actually have a plan for his future to be with the Cowboys? And the second thing is <clears throat> that broadest rant that everybody has talked about. Do you feel like that Stephen is happy with the status quo because that's essentially what brought us is insinuating that he doesn't really care as long as we're relevant. I don't agree with that. I, yeah. Well, I, I think that's what he's saying. Don't you think that's what he was saying? I think a lot of people think that, uh, that I've had, we've had callers on here that think that, that the Cowboys want to just be relevant, like just want to be up there. And I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't agree with that at all that you just want to be relevant but I think people are mistaking the fact that they're not making big changes that saying that they're okay with it. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I, I think that you know you have a good, good team. You have a, you've built a foundation here. What tweaks do we need to do? We need to blow this whole thing up, or do you need to make a couple of changes here and there? And I think that's the route the Cowboys are going. But I don't think it's like we're fine. We had a great year because we have all these ratings on our football game. That, that, I don't think that's it at all. And do you well, real quick? Let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you think that they have they have or are going to make changes? Because 
it, it, it could look like the same whole thing if Quinn comes back. I mean, are yeah. there any tweaks or changes going to happen? Yeah, I, th- I think that's a great question, and I and I and I've written an article on that. They have to do something. They are not good enough. I mean, like we watched the Green Bay Forty Nine er game, and you're like, both of these teams just kicked their ass. So you're not that close. I mean, they're close, but not really. You know, they, they are not on the level of the 49ers, and I don't know if they would be for the Chiefs. They didn't, they didn't play them. So you're, you're there. You're in the tournament, you know, but you're not, you're not on that top level. And so uh, they've got to figure out a way to get there, Joe. I mean, that's, you're right about that. And you're not going to change any coordinators and all that. You're going to say, let's roll this out again. Think about Dan Quinn's defense from year one to year two. It was much different. That's what I think Jerry's hoping that year one to two from McCarthy and Dak could be even better than what it was. But they better get a running game in there. That's what I think needs to be fixed. They've got to get yep. they've got to be able to run the ball when it's third and three and you're trying to run out the clock and everyone knows you've got to run the football because you've got to make sure they call a timeout. You know, you got to be able to get three yards because Pacheco can do it for the Chiefs. They figure it out and they 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 can run it when the world knows they're running. So. Yeah, all, all four of the teams in the in the championship games had very substantial run games. Yes, in, in in different ways. Sometimes it's it's running the ball right up the middle. Sometimes it's Lamar Jackson running it, or whatever it is. You know, sometimes you have receivers running it like the 49ers have. They have all kinds of different runners there. But one way or another, they don't have to put the ball in the air to get yardage. And I think that's what the Cowboys need to figure out how to do a better job of. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. All right, let's keep it rolling here. We've got we got. Let's go with a text question here. Dan from Philly. What are your thoughts on Dan Campbell's decisions on all the fourth down calls against the Niners? It's one thing to be aggressive, but he keeps putting his team in bad situations. Pass Cowboy Greg Hardy. I'm good on that one. That's fine, Greg Hardy. Uh, don't have a whole lot for him. Uh, Dan Campbell. Now there's a past cowboy. Well, we'll talk about that one. Um, you know that's that was unfortunate. Um, I didn't agree with that with the calls. I didn't agree, and, and and this is not hindsight. It's not hindsight. It's it's right there. It's actually foresight when you think about it. I mean, I I didn't have a huge problem with the fourth down fourth quarter one, as I did the third quarter. Third quarter, I thought that was a ridiculous decision um, because you're up 17 at the half. And you know the 49ers are going to come come at you. They're ready. They, whatever they said, they got to get this thing done. They go down and get a field goal. You drive down, and you can get another field goal. At this point, we can just match. Whatever you're doing, I can do. That's cool because I'm up 17. But they didn't. They went for it, tried to go up 21, and they didn't get it. Next thing you know, it's a seven-point game because weird stuff starts to happen. And then you start, you know, then you start nerves start to factor in. I, I thought that was a bad decision by Dan Campbell the first time around. Um, and I say this all the time. I, I, there's, a, there's no difference to me between playing to win and playing not to lose. Uh, the result is the same. And I think that you've got to put yourself in, in the best you know, situation to will win the game. And especially you know, put the 49ers, keep them on the ropes. And, and I, I thought that, you know, and that's the way he plays. And he played it against the Cowboys. He was just like, go for it. Two points. Oh, no, now you're you're back to the seven. Go for it. Oh, you didn't get it again, but you got another penalty. Go for it. It's like, you know, I mean, you play that way, you're gonna you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some. And I but I thought in this situation, I thought he could have played it a little bit smarter than he did. But you know, that's that's the style that got him there. That's the style that 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 everyone loves. And he's gonna be that way. But I thought his impatience maybe got the best of him a little bit. Um, all right, Alex in South Bay. California, Alex. Hey, what's going on, Nick? How uh, you long doing? Time no talk. Um, hope all has been well. Happy New Year! It's been a while. Uh, I just wanted to touch on uh, two things re- really quick for you. Uh, so the first is, um, you know, as a because when I called the very first time, I had mentioned, you know, I grew up on the triplets. Uh, my favorite player was Emmett Smith, which obviously that's still to this day. But I don't have as good a memory as you do. I can't go back and think of like a particular play or something like that that I remember. So my most recent memories go. Um, takes me to my first question that I have for you as a fan and as someone who covers the team two games that come to mind for me that were just my favorite uh 2016 when you're being led by two rookies in Pittsburgh in a shootout with uh, Big Ben mm-hmm. uh and 2014 
when you go visit uh, Seattle, Seattle, who just came from winning a championship. Like those were those are my two most recent favorite memories of two games that I just thought were outstanding. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted your opinion as far as like a fan and who's uh, someone who covers the team again. Out of those two games, do you have a particular favorite? Yeah. Uh, for each, uh, as a fan and as the reporter. Sure. Uh, so that was question number one. Uh, and then question number two for you was, um, I don't know if you heard the, uh, you know, the little news that kind of broke out uh, regarding uh, a past employee with the Dallas Cowboys who, you know, said a little story about uh, the Detroit Lions calling the Cowboys, I don't know what year it was, about, about a potential trade. Uh, Stephen Jones answered, and he really didn't do much with that. Uh, you know, hearing that as a fan, it's just very disheartening if that's how the, organi- uh, the organization is ran. Uh, and it's going to be ran like that, uh, obviously, because he's not going anywhere. Uh, I just want to see if you have an opinion on that, and then I'll just hang up and listen. Thanks, man. Yeah. Have a good one. All right. Um, regarding that, um, that – now, I'm not in the room either, um, so, but but from a lot of people that that have been in the room, and and, and that that story is kind of uh, that's gotten some people's attention. I, I'll just say this, you know, from someone that wasn't in there though, that that story is being told that, that that didn't happen. Okay, that that's that's the side that I'm hearing that that nothing close to that happened. So, um, if you want to form an opinion on that, I think you're you're barking up the wrong tree on on that one. Um, so, the person that told that story wasn't in the room either. So it's hard for me to say they didn't have. All, all I know is that the, I I don't think the Cowboys are you know that they obviously didn't like hearing that because they don't feel like that that anything close to that is is happened. So uh, again, that's it's I didn't I wasn't there. I have a hard time believing that anything close to that happened. And so I'll just leave it at that. Um, <clears throat> as for those two games, 2016, 2014, both of them great. Both of them games that were kind of statement type. And it's funny how you can, in 14, you're making a statement, and then two years later, you're doing it again because of kind of what happened in, in 15. But both of those were statement games on the road, tough place to win. And both of them were going back to what we said in the first call run the ball. We're going to run it. We're going to, you know, we're going to run the football, and you can't do anything to, to stop them. And so that's that's sort of what, what happened in those games. Different runners, Marco Murray in one, and Zeke and the other one, but I think it was just an ability to go in there in a tough place. If you can run the ball, you can, you know, you, your offensive line can push people around. It doesn't really matter if it's if it's on the road or grass and indoors, turf, doesn't really matter. You can do it, you know. So I think that's one of those situations where the Cowboys, those two games were just it was just a toughness, grit, go up there and, and, and go take it. Both of them were really fun and enjoyable to be right there for it. So <clears throat> good good stuff there. All right, let's go to Rob in Vegas is our next caller. Hey, Nick. Hey, Rob. <clears throat> you know, the, watching that uh, Ravens game, I thought I was looking at the Cowboys. I mean, you, you saw a team that was undisciplined, uh, making stupid penalties, and Lamar Prescott, you know, he, he's the same guy, him and Dak. Uh, it's amazing how really? good both The same yeah. guy? Well, in the playoffs, he's two and four, and Dak's two and five. And what I mean by that is, these are two really good quarterbacks. Yeah. In the regular season, but when you get them in the playoffs, they don't even resemble each. You know what they do. Lamar, for some reason, thought he was going to go toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball, and I, I don't understand why. His best attribute is running and moving, and and he he just wasn't doing that enough. And the turnovers, I mean, we see that with Dak. It's, it's the turnovers that always kill each of those quarterbacks in the playoffs. And uh, But Lamar will never get, you know, take the heat like no. Dak will. No. Uh, talking about Dallas, are they going to do anything big? No. You know how Jerry's going to spin this. Jerry's going to turn around and say, well, we got Diggs coming back. We got Overshone going to come back. Mozzie should be better. Mike McCarthy, the offense should be better in the second year. That's how he's going to spin it. He's not going to go after a Chris Jones from Kansas City or Patrick Queen from the Ravens. He's not going to do those moves. He should, if he really thinks he's close yeah. and he's staying, he's going to sign Dak to 50 something million. And if Dan Quinn comes back, you need to make some moves. I agree. Not, for the, not so much for the fans, because unfortunately, 
guys like us who and women like us that are on the show, we're going to watch regardless if we're four in twelve of thirty. You know, we're going to be there. But if you truly believe that you're in the same class as the 49ers, the Eagles, whoever, and you're only a player or two away, and we see what plays their way. They need defensive line, and they need linebackers on the defense. And on the offense, you do need a running back, but you need a, a, a bigger, stronger offensive line, maybe center. If you truly believe that's all you're missing – well, there's a lot of good guys. You got the guy in Washington. I would love for him to make a move for Allen. You're going to have to spend some money. Uh, I don't see them moving Micah Parsons to middle linebacker, which that would be the best move to do, but I don't see it. We already discussed that. So, yeah. but, that but unfortunately, I, just see, I, I think that's how Jerry's going to spit it. Now, I don't know about the Stephen Jones thing. I hope he doesn't become like the Steinbrenner family uh, when uh, – Mr. Steinbrenner passed away. The Yankees fell apart because the kids never had to put in the, the blood, sweat, and tears like Mr. Steinbrenner did and like Mr. Jones did. You know, yeah. he, he bought the team. And let's face it, it's, it's good to be a Jones. I mean, the grandsons, the sons, the daughters. Here you go. You're a multi-billionaire from the womb. I mean, that's an awesome thing. They're not as hungry as the father. And... It could go two ways. But but do Maybe. you know that? Hold on. But do you know that? I mean, do I, you really I, well, know who's hungry and who isn't? I mean, like, I, that, that's, that's predominantly, a tough... Predominantly, yes. Yes. But just, it's just a natural thing. You see it with Jerry. Jerry made two coaching moves that were unconventional. Jimmy, because I just had invested $140 million. I needed a return. As soon as he got the return... Jimmy was gone because I didn't want to put up with the crap. Bill Parcells, I needed a new stadium, and Dave Campbell was not getting that. After that, it was more about being comfortable. We talked about it. He hired coaches that now had no business. Jerry wanted it. But these, there's no way that his kids could be as hungry as Jerry. The team is worth $11 billion, the richest sports team in the world, and hasn't won anything in 30 years. So what, what, how bad is life? How bad is things? That's why Jerry and unfortunately the kids always say, dad, things aren't so bad. Let's not blow it up. Let's not make the move. I would love to be in a fly in the room and hear Jerry say, I think we should do this. No, dad, I don't think that's a good move. You know, we are 12 or five. Because they, they, they're not invested like Jerry. I'm not saying they don't want to win, but it's just natural. It's just natural that these, they never had to go through the hard times. Yeah. So okay. I just I just think that's part of the problem with this with the with the whole system of the Dallas Cowboys is it's like you're a parent, you know, your wife says to the kid, You're going to bed, uh, you're not playing video games, and then he comes to you and you say, Ah, oh, come on, you can go play for now. That 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 that's how the cowboys are. All right. And all right. I mean, I, that's hard to say because I, I, I don't – I mean, you can go off perceptions on what you think, but I, I, I think this I – can't, I can't sit here and say that they're not hungry to win. Um, I think Jerry's – No, no, I'm, I'm not saying they're not hungry, but they're not as hungry as somebody else. They're not as hungry as – as, as Jerry, Jerry Jones was when he bought the team. There's a lot of and, people that aren't as fill-in-the-blank as Jerry in a lot of I ways. Know, but, but but let's face it, Jerry should have fired himself from GM 20 years ago, and he probably would have if it was if we were talking about yeah. the pizza places he owned or something else. But let's face it, he wants this is his fun, this is his excitement, this is his radio show, this is his. I get on the microphone. Jerry would rather be a a GM that doesn't win a Super Bowl than an owner who just sits up in the box and wins. If they said to Jerry, you got to sit in that box, okay. you can't do it. no more TV. I get it. I get it. With a Super Bowl, Rob, you say no. That's fine. And, and we got to move to another callers. But I'll, I'll, I will say this, though. There's not a GM in the world going to get fired off this, off this last season, right? You're not going to do that. You're not going to fire the GM. So all this, I think a lot of times people like to, to blame Jerry just because he's the common denominator for 28 years and all that stuff. But then say that. You know, this team had all this talent. 
Well, I mean, he's he's the GM. There's he's put a, there's a lot of I mean a lot of records were broken, a lot of Pro Bowlers. No, that didn't lead to success in the playoffs, and I get that. But I don't think it was a GM problem right now. Um, so there's a lot of issues, a lot of stuff going on. But it's it's I think that sometimes there's a moving target on what people are are complaining about. Uh, this is a good football team, but they've got to figure out how to make it great because. When they play against other really good teams, it didn't stack up as well. We all know that. We all see that. But I, I don't think this is this is a, a, a matter of being hungry or not hungry enough and whatever. You like being relevant. I don't. I don't believe in that. I don't. This, they they built a really good team, but they still got a ways to go to be playing football in in February, and we haven't seen that. All right, let's go to Katya in Russia. Is that right? Yes. How are I'm you doing? From Russia. I'm doing fine. And I'm uh, so happy that you taking my call. Thank yeah. you. Um, it's my first time when I'm calling. And yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I wanted to express some emotions about uh, how it is to be a fan from, uh, from Russia. It's not easy. And it's not that easy because mostly games... Uh, playing at night when it's night here and after midnight and usually I have to wor- go to work after that. Yeah. Uh, so because of time difference. How, how how did you become a cowboy fan and and like have you always lived there or? or... Uh, I'm always l- lived in Russia and I became a fan because of my boyfriend. I'm in a distant relationship. Or, um, and my boyfriend uh, from Texas, okay. and he was busy each Sunday, and I was curious what he's doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> and yeah. I decided to watch uh, football. Wow! Now that now that's a long distance relationship, okay? Like I mean, Texas to Russia, yeah, that's that qualifies <laughs> as long distance. Wow! So what do you think of the team? What, what's what's going on? What, what are your thoughts there? Um, I think uh, a Cowboys playing better than. Previous seasons, anyway. Even if we don't look at that that playoff game, uh, everything else was really better, and they improved so many things. And uh, even uh, when they said they're going to work on penalties to reduce the amount of penalties, and they really did it with uh, in the game with Washington. So I see they can then be able to improve everything. I just uh, shocked that what happened with, on play uh, playoff game. Uh, so. Yeah. Well, you, it's hard. You're right. It's hard to, to take away the playoff game because that's the last one. That's the one we remember. But I, I get your point. I mean, it's it's a, it was a good season, but it's kind of what have you done for me lately? And lately that we saw we saw that the loss, but. Um, what else? You got any other thoughts about the team? Um, I really believe in Cowboys. Okay. I know they can play better, and uh, um, I expect uh, that something impressive will happen next season. So I'm, I'm just uh, staying positive and optimistic. Oh, great. Favorite player? Who's your favorite player? Uh, C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb. Okay. Well, he certainly and has especially. Years. Especially, I like uh, his uh, duo with uh, Dark because they they playing together so good. I like to see that connection between Dark and CD. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you for the call. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say, Chris, can we get a here we go? Because I mean, this is certainly a first time caller. First time caller uh, from Russia, for sure. So, <laughs> well, thank you so much for calling, and I, you know, I say it all the time. Appreciate anybody overseas and. The dedication it takes to be a Cowboy fan. It's hard enough being in Texas, but I, I can't imagine being uh, in, in Russia and uh, the time difference and all that. But we definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day or evening, midnight. I don't know what time it is there. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Katya from Russia with the call. And it's interesting. You know, she says it's like it's like she just wants to put the playoff game out you know it's like Dak and CD they have such a great connection well except for the playoff game where, where they didn't and they had such a great season except for the playoff game when they when they didn't but um anyways that was, was a nice call let me get 
got a couple of text questions that I've been up here. I need to, to read. Kevin from Virginia. I've read a couple articles saying Zach Martin is contemplating retirement. Have you heard anything from that inside the star? Also, when are you allowed to talk about other teams pending free agents? After the Super Bowl, new league gear. I'd like to ask questions about free agency. Uh, but be respectful towards the process. Don't get you in trouble. Thank you. Appreciate that, Kevin from Virginia. It's always a little interesting to talk about free agents because, you know, I think when it gets a couple weeks, three weeks or so closer, you get into March, get into late February, when you get an idea that, you know, teams are going to be, you know, f- players are going to be free agents. Uh, so, some of the guys you, know, you have all the way up until mid-March to be re-sign with your team, so you're still technically with the team but you kind of get an idea who's on the list at least who's on the list for unrestricted free agents and that's the way I view it I mean you're on the list until you're not uh you know you can't go sign these guys but you know you're 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 a pending free agent um and I think that's I don't think that I think we can sit and talk about that kind of stuff and you know just know knowing that you know anything can happen when you get up until um till the middle of March so uh, as for Zach Martin I have not heard that uh, I know he's not uh, playing in the in the Pro Bowl. Uh, he opted out of that. I think uh, I think his wife's expecting uh, they're expect, we're expecting another a child. So that uh, that's one of the reasons. And also, I think he knew that uh, that Tyler Smith was the next alternate. So by him not going to the Pro Bowl, Tyler Smith gets to do that. And um, so, but I, I don't think no, I, I don't think he's contemplating retirement. I I I think he was thinking about his future and. I think if he would have done, if he really was thinking that way, I don't think he would have done that um, back in training camp. Well, you know, holding out like he did, and you know, wanting a little bit more money. I, I don't think he would have done that if he was just one year away from from calling it quits. Unless something happened this year, but I just don't. I haven't heard that and get the sense of that. He he was talking after the game about what they need to do to get better next season and stuff. So I I don't b- believe that that is the case uh, there. All right, let's go to Trey in Virginia. I, I can hear you, Nick. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. What's up? Oh man, I'm 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 hyped to be online with you right now. First time. First time caller. Warm it up, Chris. There we Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, real quick. I just wanted to say, first off, like a lot of people say, thank you, thank Derek and everybody yeah. because like I've been following y'all for over twenty years now. I'm thirty four. I'm one of those young guys. Yeah, you sound first. eighteen. Like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought twenty years, yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, like my first memory, Super Bowl 30, Larry Brown, two interceptions, 27-17. That's my first memory. You were so like six. Is... You were like six. Exactly. <laughs> Fresh six. Hey, that, that's – yeah, <laughs> that's the way to do it. Who would have thought that you wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have had another one? Hey, exact, not yet. Yet. All but, right. um, you know, just giving, just, just giving the good vibes out for everybody. I'm also a University of Virginia fan. Anybody that knows anything about college athletics knows that I, I'm a spurn person in a lot of ways. But then that one time happened in 2019 after we got embarrassed by UMBC the previous year. So, are you saying are you saying Purdue's going to win it all in basketball this year? Hey, if it, if it does happen, then I'm I'm damn sure putting some money on the Cowboys next year. And if you don't know what we're referring to, Virginia, the number one seed or a number one seed in the tournament in 2019. Uh, yeah, lost, it was 2018, and we lost. 2018, the- first team to ever lose to a number 16 seed. Uh, embarrassing, so embarrassing for a year that they came back the next year and won the whole tournament. And then Purdue, a number one seed last season, lost uh, to a number 16. And uh, and they're number one, or maybe number one in the country. They're, they're really good this year. So, exactly. so the point is, as embarrassing as it might be the to, to bow out in the tournament or the playoffs, if you if you're built the right way, you can you can turn it around. We'll see if we'll see if they do that. But exactly. See, you you knew where I was going. Well, yeah, been catchy. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, but, you got to be cavalier yeah. in the way that you <laughs> respond to adversity. Exactly. Here we go. Exactly. And you got to have the right guy. <laughs> Didn't they have a guy named Guy? No. Yeah, yeah, they did. Kyle Guy. Kyle Guy. You got to have the right guy to, to, to lead him. All right, I'm done. I'm done with the bad jokes. Sorry. I'm never no, done, but I'm done joke. for now. <laughs> All right, two quick things. But, yeah, on top of that, just thanking you guys because, like I said, over the last 20-plus years of watching the dot-com yeah. and everybody, like, 
y'all have been like the extra friends I never knew I needed <laughs> because you got me through all the good and all the bad, and that's beyond the playing field. It's just personal struggle, yeah. a divorce, everything. Uh-huh. And Sorry to hear that. Uh, no, it's all good because I've got a wonderful fiance now. So, you know, second time's a charm. Agreed. Um, but, yeah, so it's just through all the good and bad, no matter how bad things may seem, how bad it hurts as a sports fan, because trust me, we all know it. There's always light at the end of the day. And I just, I appreciate all you guys because your content is just, it's it's amazing. I wish I could have seen you guys in Oxnard um, this past July because I did go to the first Saturday. Um, can't win. You know, it was the infamous mojo moment where – Everybody was missing field goals. So oh, man. I, I, I was so who knew we were gonna all did see you, the burst. Did you think uh, did, did you think you were seeing an all pro kicker um that day when they were missing field goals? I thought he had an all pro leg because he was definitely booming from distance. It was just going to the left or the right. Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm done with two things I've decided I'm 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 done with this year. I'm never gonna do it again. Number one I'm never going to root for a certain team the Cowboys should play in the playoffs. Never doing that again because you just don't know. Number two, I'm never judging any kicks in Oxnard, California again. Not judging a kicker by what I see or don't see in Oxnard. It's it's. I'm not saying it's like this wind tunnel, but it, it just doesn't. The kicks don't. It's just weird. It's weird the way they kick there. It's weird the way the wind does. Kind of. It's a crosswind. Just. As long as, as they're decent, just get to the games. We'll see what happens. Dan exactly. Bailey wasn't very good, if I remember. Uh, yeah. no, actually, Dan Bailey was in San Antonio his rookie year. But I know he, he'd come back after that, and he wasn't that good. Coming off a Pro Bowl year, and then he everything was fine. Uh, Oxnard, it's, it's great in many ways, but judging kickers is not one of them. Exactly, exactly. And then last off, I'll just I'll make it quick. Um, I had sent you the text last week about what you wanted between like a center and a linebacker. So mm. I wanted to follow that up with, and I'll let you go. Um, when it comes to a linebacker, what type of traits would you love to see in them? And I'll say for me to mm. answer back, because I know you like to throw it back. Yes. I would love to see a Ray Lewis yeah. Or oh yeah, in more recent terms, that's Patrick what I want. Type of dude, Patrick you know. Queen. Yeah, yeah. I'll take a Ray Lewis. Thank you. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll take that guy. Um, no, I, I know what you're saying. And he, what he was yeah. picked, what 26th or so. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a late first rounder. Yeah. Um, and then also for the center, I would. I wish we could find the next Fred Beard, Travis Frederick. That would make my heart, you sure. know, complete if we could find the next. Tra- but you know, they're not a dime a dozen. No. So. I'll, I'll hang up and I'll listen to your thoughts. Thank yeah. you for your call. Thank yeah. you for your time. And I plan on being on more often. All right. That sounds good. Good call. Uh, good job, Trey. Uh, you know, center, um, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to the woods. I'm finding this uh, lumberjack that's got some football ability. Um, and, uh, you know, he's got some quickness to him. Strong as an ox. That's one. That's the guy I want. And I'm obviously joking, but, but you just need that tough – bouncer type type guy um and uh I, I think they they missed that a little bit now linebacker this is where it'll be interesting to see dan quinn if he does come back as the defensive coordinator that i i think there needs to be a little bit of a, a um philosophical change um I, i'm looking at more of a run hit type linebacker that that fills the gap more than than okay so maybe his 40 time wasn't the best i'll never forget when I was younger and I was really, really into football and I had a VHS tape and I might've told this story about, it was called crunch course. It was about the biggest hits. It was a 45 minute NFL films tape on hitting and tough guys and things like that. And a guy had a quote about Dick Butkus. And he said, if you asked him to run the 40, it would take him three days, but sideline to sideline, he was faster than anybody on the field. He could go and chase the football. That to me is what a linebacker really is. In 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 sweatpants or spandex in, in, in Indianapolis running the 40 and he's runs a four seven five and everyone's like, oh not, not very good. Okay, put him on the field, let him go get the football and see what happens. And I think sometimes I think from a linebacker position, especially with this team, there needs to be a little bit more focus on running into the into the hole, into the gap, filling that. And making the play, making the hit, and taking on a guard eight yards down the field, and getting 
rid of him and go into making the play. That's something I think the Cowboys miss a little bit from the position. And I thought they were they were getting that with Damone Clark, and maybe he can develop into that. But there's there's some you know there's some things that this team needs to get better at linebacker, and that's the kind of linebacker I'm looking at. All right, Kyle from East Brunswick, New Jersey. He says if this is the year to go all in, and they're bringing everyone back, would you rather sign the top defensive tackle or linebacker in free agency? Mm. Well, the top. It's a different question because I think the top defensive tackles are like all pros. You know, there's some of those guys out there. I don't know if there's top linebackers that are that are that way. So it's probably going to make more sense if they if they get the top linebacker because I think I think from what the cost is. Um, but either way, if they have an ability to stop the run, that's the guy that I'm I'm looking for. All right, let's go to Matt in Los Angeles. What's up? Uh, it's my second time calling in. I All was right. the one last week talking about Dak and the sports psychologist. Okay. And that's not a knock on him, by the way, at all. Yeah. Like, I wasn't trying to. No, I, I, I didn't oh. think so. I mean, I, okay. yeah, I, no, I, I didn't think so. I just feel like in that Packer game, you didn't see those mistakes all season long, you know, that the mistakes he was making that Packer game. But um, anyways, in regards to the draft class, I hate the grief they're getting. I think it's more of a credit to the way they've drafted in the recent, in the, in the, um, that's, that's part of it. It's part you know of, what I mean? It's like right, they, now, they have so, two things. Are yeah. you saying, are they because they're getting compared to better classes or uh, because the, those classes are, those players are still here and it's hard to, to get onto the field? I was talking about hard to get on the field, but you, but your first point is just more solidifies what I'm trying to yeah. say. Um, I do. I am, I, I am upset. I mean, that they totally whiffed on, Kelvin Joseph and and Nashawn Wright. I mean, it's it, and, but then it's like okay, well they struck gold with Bland. I get it. Yeah. But like, they couldn't like you know Cheeto and Jordan Lewis. Like just give me that. You know what I mean? If they could have got that type of play yeah. out of Kelvin and Nashawn, then we wouldn't be playing zone coverage against the Packers the entire game because they didn't even trust Wright to go in there for Gilmore and place a man. You know. Um, you know. But. Uh, let me say this about Nashawn Wright. Nashawn Wright was a, is a product of what Dan Quinn's prototype right. corner. He wants that big, long cornerback that that can that can run and turn his hips and things like that. And Nashawn Wright showed the traits of that. He didn't show. He didn't have a lot of tape of him doing that. I think this was more of a kind of a project and maybe develop him. And I, he just hasn't developed. It, to that level, right. you know, he's got, he looks the part, you know, if he yeah. was, if he could do all the things you would want at a corner, then yeah. But, you know, there's a reason why there's not many six, four corners. I mean, right. there's just hard to do that. I mean, there's a, there's, it's hard to keep up with Tyreek Hill, even if you look like him, much less if you're six, totally. four and lanky and stuff like that. So it's tough. Totally. But, um, uh, Scoot, like Mozzie and Schoonmaker, those are positions that are, that typically, Take a good, take a good season. Like Quentin Williams was not dominant his rookie year, you know. Um, and I, I think I think they're getting what they what they expected out of those positions. What does confuse me about Mozzie is they drafted him to be a trash can full of dirt, and then they made him drop like it's the size of a three tech. You know, yeah. have you heard any whispers around the water cooler as no. to why they were doing that? No, no, I have not, and I. I that that hasn't come up and probably it probably should but i have not i've not heard exactly what went into that um and i'm not 100% sure that the cowboys were like signing off on this you know like all, all completely like let's lose all this weight so i really don't know i don't know um we we should i'm sure those will be questions that that will be asked um i do know this i talked to um Lunda Wells today, actually, tight ends coach. And he said, he, you know, I, I talked to him about Ferguson going to the Pro Bowl, and it's, it's a big deal for, you know, a position coach to get, get a guy in the Pro Bowl. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're an alternate or not or whatever. He's in. He's in the Pro Bowl, and he always will be a Pro Bowler. But he was talking about, he also said, don't 
Don't forget about Schoolmaker. He said, this guy got hurt at the worst time, um, you know, with right before it, in the offseason and before camp. Yep. And Ferguson blew up. He really did. But he said, yep. this guy is going to be a really, really good player for us. And, and I expect him to take a huge second year. I do too. And and you know who else that took a huge second year leap? Jake, Jake Ferguson. Ferguson. Right. Yeah. So I I think they um, I think they'll, they'll be just fine. I, I really do. I think Ferguson will be the guy, and I think Schoonmaker will be somebody that that will you know be a good blocker that will also you know be able to make some plays. He's got to he's got to be a little bit more sure sure handed, maybe a little yeah. less stiff, but he'll be he'll be fine. And he didn't do much of that in college, so it's still somewhat new to him. Right. You know? So I think a full year working with Dak. Um, and then Overshone had all the signs of being a, a star. You can't you can't fault the yeah. team for a guy getting injured. Right. And then Fahoko, I think he's going to be a great power DN, which we need to stop the run. But that was just another, I think, depth pick because yeah. of how well they drafted in the last few years, you know? Yeah. And then you're anything beyond fourth round, if you're you're hoping, but you're not expecting to get like a lot of, you know, it, that's just my my personal take. You know, you're hoping to get production out of them, but you're not necessarily right. you know, banking on it or, or, or budgeting that. Uh, I don't know, man. Mozzie just the, the vibes. I saw Malik Collins get five and a half sacks as a three technique as a rookie, and then they started messing with him at one technique and this and that. And I'm like, no, like let Mozzie do what he does. Let him terrorize that interior and help our linebackers run. You know. Well, we'll see. It's big off season for, for okay. both of them, both the Schoonmaker and Mozzie, and Overshown for, for that sure. for that matter. Uh, uh, Overshown, so far so good on the rehab. Looks pretty good. Um, if this is January, it, I got I got yeah. I saw a little bit of him, um, and. Um, you know, for where he is here in January, I, I, I think, I think it'd be. In, it, it seems like he would be in good shape to, to do some of the off season stuff and the course training camp. All right, Matt. For sure. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Good stuff. Yep. All right. Uh, how about? Uh, I'm trying to. Who is this text message from here? Um, this is oh Anthony, Anthony in Miami. Actually, Anthony in Miami was our first caller. Uh, had a little bit of uh, difficulties um, technically at first, uh, and so he he couldn't hang on with us. But uh, he said it'll be there. Um, he said I'm still the number one caller. I'll, he said I'll still be the number one caller. Have a great show. Sorry, um, Anthony. Appreciate that. Um, sorry it didn't work out, but um, always always a good caller for sure. How about Chris in San Angelo, Texas? Hello, Nick. How you doing, buddy? Good, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well. First off, I'll say the. The listening to the caller from Russia that was delightful. I loved that. It was and, awesome. Yeah, that that, that was <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, especially the story. You know, she's like, yeah. "What are you doing? You never call mm -hmm. me between twelve and three on a Sunday. What's going on here?" Exactly. Who are these cowboys? I, yeah, I know. I was like, "Wow, I don't know if I can follow that." But anyway, yeah, yeah, hard hard to follow that for sure. <laughs> but what? Is, all, and all, I, is Go ahead, do you sir. think San Angelo, Texas, is is like Russia? Because I think there would we, be different. Goodness, we yeah, polar opposites. It's like, yeah, but they I didn't mean, they I didn't film Rocky Four in San Angelo. Is that what you're telling me? There was no, no there was no Drago in, in San Angelo. They, they actually didn't film it in Russia either. I think it was in it was in Montana, but whatever. It's it's Montana, hey, all right, you know, little things, little sure. things. Chris, what's um, up? Okay, look, I just had a, I had a couple of questions. Uh, first off, as far as the uh, the draft goes, where are you as far as, let's just say, round one, round two, who you pick in round one and round two position-wise, not people. I don't expect you to know that. Yeah, well. And then, okay, go ahead. And, oh, no, no, my other one was uh, as far as our free agents are, I was going to keep it kind of the same um, – which two, if you could only keep two, who are you keeping? And then that's basically. Okay. Un and that's From an unrestricted standpoint? Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Resigning. Oof. That's a good one. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, well, who, who are your two? Um, my two or I'm thinking, oh, gosh, you had to ask me that. Okay. The guy, 
I'm thinking Hankins and um, like the defensive end. By like Fowler or, uh, or Dorrance Armstrong? Dorrance Armstrong. Sorry. Okay. Thank you for keeping right. I had those two in mind, but I wasn't ready to answer that. No, that's Sorry. okay. That's okay. Um, thank you for the call. Um, I like it was Hankins and Dorrance. Hankins yes. and Dorrance. Um, yes. I'm fine with that. I think that would be good. Thanks. Um, you know, I would like to see, I, I mean, I would like to see Diggs, Gilmore, and Bland as my three corners. Um, so Gilmore, you know, I, I throw him in there. Jordan Lewis, you can, you know, you could, you could put him in. Um, but I think Hankins and Gilmore would be two. Now, they're about the same as far as, Older guys, veteran guys, but you know, it was it was unfortunate what happened to Gilmore, the injury, and uh, you know, I, I think it did affect the team because he was one of the guys. Is ironic because he was one of the guys. He's been there. He's won Super Bowls. He's won Defensive Player of the Years. You know, he's he's played in bigger games than that, and so you you wish you could have got a hundred percent, you know, him health wise, and you know, Diggs as as well, and then now you've got Bland, and so. Um, I, I, that would be, that would be something that would be intriguing for me. Uh, it might cost a little bit, um, because you know, he's, he had a good year, but you know, with Brandon cooks, if he comes back and he should be, he's under contract. So that, that would be, I, you know, that's, they're good friends. I'd like to see Gilmore and Hankins would be, uh, my two in, in that, in that, for that question. All right. And then also for the, for the rounds, you know, when, when you're picking at that, you know, you, you, I'm looking at a player that can contribute right away. That that's what I'm thinking. So get give me a guy that that can help me tomorrow. And whoever that is, it, it maybe that it's going to be you know maybe that would be a center and and I would be fine with that. Um now I will say this though, don't don't forget free agency starts in mid-March. The draft is late April. So they're going to have some kind of fix at center uh, they'll, they'll they'll sign someone it doesn't mean that you're not going to draft the guy in the first round but i don't think they'll be going into the draft going our starting center is going to be in here that's too dangerous to do that so they'll, they'll have something there but but you know your first round if, if you can if you can get a plug and play linebacker or center or even left tackle if that's the route that you want to go and if if it works out and if there was a guy there Running back would work for me, but I don't know if it will be. I don't know if that if this is the year for a running back there, but who knows? A lot of there's a lot of forty times to be run, a lot of pro days, a lot of interviews at the combine. There's there's guys that people are projecting in these early mocks in this third round, and next thing you know, they could be sitting there in the middle. You know, I mean, a guy like Jamar Jameer Gibbs, you know, he went twelfth overall. I mean, he kind of kind of shot up the boards a little bit. So who knows what will happen there. All right. I think the phone lines are open. Is that right, Chris? For, Correct. All right. Phone lines are open. We got a little bit more uh, to go. Maybe we'll go maybe five, ten more minutes or so. So if you want to call in quickly, this is the time. If you say, oh, I never can get in, you can get in right now. 888-855-2297. I know there was a question up here that I did not read. Maybe, maybe not. All right. Um, but, uh, you know, going back at one of the, the questions about um, about the about the Lions game and, you know, just it's easy to sit and, and do that. You know, we talk about Dan Campbell should have done this and should have done that. I mean, I, I'll, I'll say this, though, about about what he's done for that team is he's brought a mentality. And this is not easy to do when you're the when you're the coach of the Lions who have never won. And, and so to change the culture, change the attitude and the belief of, hey, we can go win, I mean, that, that's impressive. Yeah, and I, I said I, I thought they were a little too aggressive. Um, I thought he was in, in the decision-making. But that mindset is not easy to just turn on and off. It isn't. And so I'm not trying to be hypocritical, but I'm saying you gotta be, you got to be fair. You can't just sit here and say, well, and I did it. You know, you can't do it all the time, but that's who he is. That's who Dan Campbell is. That's who the Lions are now, and that's the belief, and that's kind of what got him there. So um, it, it's fair to criticize that moment, and maybe it's a learning thing for him, and 
for all coaches, you know, and McCarthy did it a couple times too. It's a belief in your team. We, we, yeah, we could run the ball and have to kick a field goal and all that. But if I just, if Dak just hits CD right here, game's over. Cause I've seen him do it a million times. So it's a belief in your players and your team. And sometimes it can bite you, but it's, it's kind of who you are. So uh, on one hand, I thought it hurt the team, but you understand it because that's, that's who he is. All right, let's go to Joe in Pennsylvania on the line. Joe, what's up? Hey, Nick. Want to run something by you? Sure. See what you thought. When I look at um, how teams are built and where they gain advantages, um, it's obviously not in salary cap or practice time because those are set for all the teams. So then you have to look to coaching. And I think when you look, you know, objectively at Cowboys coaches, you got McCarthy who won a Super Bowl. You got Quinn who's been to a Super Bowl as a head coach. I think you'd say overall we've got good coaching. Then you have to yeah. look at talent talent acquisition. I think Jerry, Steven, and Will has done a good job at uh, bringing in talent. And, you know, even though you may say our talent may be slightly overrated just because we're on TV a lot and everything, I still think we've had good teams over the years. So I don't think that's an issue. What, and so what it falls to, to me, is what the players do on their own. Because that is the great unknown. Like, we have no idea how much film study they do on their own after practice. Do they get together with the other players and who's holding them accountable to that? And to me, I think that's kind of where Jerry comes back into play. And it's not, not, the, not the talent acquisition part, because I think he does well there. But I think by kind of not giving the head coach more ability to discipline players I think that's that's where we're lacking because rarely do you see any of our players get benched you don't see Sam Williams get benched off the punt return yeah on team um so you don't and I've somebody recently said a story about uh Felix Jones back when he fumbled and um, many times and Garrett said there was going to be consequences and then they asked Jerry about it and he said no he's going to be starting <laughs> so it's like when you have that where yeah. your coach can't discipline when he sees problems on the team I think that's where like you know you look at certain players like Sean Lee and he obviously did all the film study on his own and you could see that show up on the field um Today's team, I see that with Demarcus Lawrence. I can see him doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, But other players, I don't see that showing up. And obviously, you know, we have no way of knowing how much they're studying on the side. But it seems like that, to me, is where we're lacking the most. And I don't know how you quantify that or how you make that better other than giving the head coach who sees, you know, sees everything more ability to (laughs) discipline the players and, and hold them accountable. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that's that's kind of going down a, a line that it, it, it is hard to quantify, like you said. Um, but I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong because I wouldn't know. And you're right. You're trying you're trying to put your finger on something, and that's you know, and that's I actually appreciate that because it doesn't look like you know it's it's just coaching and the players that you know good enough and all that. Like, what else is there? And so. Maybe that could be the case. It really, it really could be. Um, I, I, I don't have a great answer for you. I, I, I like, like I said, I like, I like where where you're going with that, and uh, and we don't know, we don't know who's studying what here and there. But um, you know, Sean Lee, it's a good example, but it's also a bad example because there's not many like Sean Lee. Because Sean Lee, I'll tell you a story about him. I tried to do an interview with him about something right before his first game. It was on the train going to San Diego, and he wanted no part of it because it was a preseason game. He was focused. He had his book out. He was studying. He was all about this. these 12 snaps that he's going to play in this preseason game. It was all about business. He was that way from the start, and I'm telling you, that's it's not like he got that later on in his career when he realized, man, I got to be more of a studier. He was that way coming in. So – there, that's a good example, but at the same time, there's just not many like Sean Lee. So you would have hoped that some of these younger players kind of would have, you know, developed those skills a little bit more, but I, I don't know if they are, honestly. All right. I think so. Oh, sorry, still there. What's up, Joe? Joe? I cut him off. Cut him off. Oh, okay. Sorry, Joe. 
I, I, that was a good. It was a really good thought. It really, it really is. Um, it, those are those things. You know, I always get a little, let's get a little antsy when we talk about oh, we need more leadership or you need more heart, you need more character, you need more. It's, it's hard because it's like what what's the level? You know, you don't know that. You know, people people think Amari Cooper doesn't care about football because he's not he's not Odell Beckham and CD and whoever else you know jumping around after plays and doing all that he's just he's not doesn't mean he doesn't love football so it's hard to kind of talk about what kind of person they are you know i just watched a football life on barry sanders he never did that at all he was pretty good pretty good player uh, but anyways uh all right let's go to eric in north carolina probably our last call for the day eric or north carolina hey nick how are you doing today good how are you i'm doing great uh um, since it's the off season I thought we could talk about uh, Cowboys memorabilia. And um, I, I know this show is almost over, but I'd love to hear the usual callers maybe call in next time and tell us, like, like what kind of cool stuff of, of that they have. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you have? But um, I've got three things that that I'm really uh, thrilled about. Um, I have a personalized uh, autographed football from Roger Staubach. Wow. And, um, and I have a uh, – a, I have a letter from Tom Landry that that, that uh, I, I wrote him a letter in, in the eighties when the Cowboys were having a, a particularly poor season, mm -hmm. and um, and I told him and I told him that he was a, a outstanding coach, um, a fine Christian a gentleman, and a World War II hero. And he wrote me back, and it told, and he told me that he really, that, that that I really bolstered his morale, was his exact words. How old were and you always, when you sent this? Um, I was in high school. Wow, good for you I for think doing I was, that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I always looked up to him. He was he was so consistent, and um, and I always I always read about the players that retired, um, how much they admired him, and he was such a father figure. Um, and meant so much to him, you know, uh, or, you know, meant, meant so much to them. Um, but they didn't really say it like during the playing days, it was like afterwards, you know, when they had time to uh, reflect. But, uh, but I always thought he was an out, um, outstanding, an outstanding man. And I know he, um, he saved his uh, bomber crew. I know he was a co pilot mm -hmm. in a B 17 uh, Liberator. And, um, and I know that he saved his crew one time from just from uh i remember reading in a book that that, that the pilot had ordered the crew to uh bail out and basically uh tom said well, let me do one more thing and he changed the uh mixture the the fuel oil mixture and that saved them from uh from having to bail out over wow. germany so anyway and the last thing i have is uh is a uh, autographed Dallas Cowboy Weekly from uh, Ken Norton Jr. Uh, one time when he came to Charlotte. Okay. Well. Um, anyway. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty awesome. I don't think anybody really wants to uh, call in and, and talk with you about these things because I don't know if they're going to have a letter from Tom Landry and an autographed <laughs> ball from Roger Staubach. <laughs> now the Ken <laughs> Ken Norton Jr. You know, no, no offense to to you know Ken, but I mean, uh, you know. A little bit of a drop off from the the, the letter about Tom Landry, saying, Tom Landry. one of the greatest coaches of all time, <laughs> saying you boosted his morale, uh, which I think, oh, yeah. which probably boosted yours uh, forever. It, you know. it really has because sometimes I forget I have it. It's um, pretty awesome. And, don't lose and it, I just okay? Go through my stuff. Don't please sometimes. don't lose your autographed memorabilia from a player. Only an idiot would do that. Speaking from experience. So, uh -oh. yeah, yeah. My dad, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a story. My dad, he would travel a lot, and he got an autograph of Tony Dorsett, who was my great, who was my favorite player of all time. I was probably like nine years old, maybe 10. And he, he got his autograph. It was one of those black and white photos, you know, with Pose and all that. And it said mm -hmm. to Nick, take my place in 1998. So... They did the math oh, wow. on how I would be old. I would 22 or whatever, you know, um, you know, I'm a little scrawny kid at the time. I mean, I'm not going to be a running back in the NFL. Okay. Sorry. I'm not Christian McCaffrey. Um, but you know, and, but you know, the ironic part of that is I was an intern for the Cowboys in 1998. 
So I didn't take his place. I didn't take Tony Orsett's place. But I worked for the Cowboys. A little kid in Oklahoma worked for the Cowboys in 1998. And, um, and I don't have that picture anymore. I don't know where it went. And I'm, I might, yeah, I might get emotional thinking about that. But don't, don't, oh, forget, don't lose your stuff like that because I, I didn't forget about it. But I, I wish I had that because how sentimental that would be for me to have that. But, yeah, that, that's a cool con- oh, yeah. I, I like that. That might be our next theme of when, pe- when fans call in. Like, what do you have? You know what? That's because yeah, yeah. Because you don't have to live in you didn't live anywhere and, and and collect some cool stuff like that. So, great, great mm-hmm. concept there. I like that. So hard good, to beat good. though. And I do have a letter from uh, from Tech Tram um, as well. But the, but the Tom Landry one and the uh, Roger Staubach football are definitely the uh, yeah the highlights. Yeah, definitely for sure. So all right, Eric, that, that's good stuff. Good call. Appreciate that. All right, we are gonna. I, I said we were gonna. That was gonna be the last one. We're gonna take Zach in Germany. We're gonna we're going to Germany. Zach, what's up? Nick, what's going on, man? How are you guys doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. How's the calf holding up? The calf, it, it, it's holding yeah. up. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Uh, it's only I only heard it five years ago, um, but that's what happens when you're a non-athlete. It just it doesn't really heal very well. But uh, yeah, thanks for asking. Here you go. Yeah, no, no problem. I was, I was just at soccer practice, tweaked mine, and thought of you. So, um, yeah. Well, anyway, are you I'm over forty? Are you over forty? Uh, no, I'm, I'm thirty-seven. Okay, but I feel like I'm forty-seven. I, I, I get it. Well, can, can you just don't be an idiot and, and don't keep running on it like I did. Just stay off of it. You're fine. You'll miss a game or two, but you can't be messing around with a calf like that, man. Sure. All no, right. no, but I'll, I'll tell you what. If uh, I was looking at the schedule, and if the Panthers come out here and the Cowboys happen to join them for another overseas one, which we're due for, yep. I'll tell you what. I will. I would like to be your ringer and run the forty against Isaiah if he comes out. Okay. All right. As I was listening, I was listening a couple months ago, and he he said he was bringing the smoke to every every show. So I know you're a solo show, but you know what? I'll step in if you need me. If you guys come out this way. All right. That'll be. Uh... That'll be interesting. We're we're kind of looking at that, um, thinking maybe you know maybe if Carolina needs a needs somebody. I mean, I'm sorry, but the NFL is going to need somebody other than the Panthers to go to Germany. Uh, if that's a shot yeah. at the Panthers, sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, you, no, no. you live there. Do, you see a lot of Panthers jerseys walking around. Uh, or, no, no. Well, now when I, I went, to, I did go to the game. Um, Back in '14, when you guys went to London, I saw every jersey. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, that know, was sure be a couple. That was around. a fun game. That was fun uh, walking to the stadium and like, all right, let's play the game here. First one to find a Bucks jersey, and you're like, oh yeah, you're like, sap, you know. Yeah, you can find it. And you can find it. Yeah, yeah it, it was it. it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, on a, yeah, it's, it was it was a good time. Good time. Um, on, on a more serious note, I wanted to kind of go over some of the, the ideologies, I think, from our front office's standpoint that might need to change, right? So when you're looking at some things, and we were, you guys were discussing it not too long ago, the ideology right now is we're going to focus on draft first, sign our own, and, and build in, which works to some degree, but it hasn't really worked for us lately. And if you look at some of the mistakes that we've made, uh, this last draft class, we didn't get a lot of production out of, and I get, you know, we had some high hopes for the the third rounder there in Torres ACL, and you know, Mozzie, you know, unfortunately didn't produce. But you know, some of the other trades, they're good, like the fifth rounders to fill in. Um, and you you're right. I think we need to make a bigger splash. The problem is, is we've put ourselves in a position with looking at Dak's current contract. We kicked that can too far down the road. That. You know, he has all the leverage, and it's going to be really difficult to, to make the moves that you were discussing, to go sign a, a big free agent. Right. Uh, we might have a little cap space to do it. But also looking at, you know, what do we do with Amari, right? So we trade a first, we have the guy for three years, and then you turn around and you, you try to flip him for a fifth, you get nothing back on it. And, you know, I'm looking at other teams around the, the league. There's four teams that I think have made some big moves. And it, the Cowboys, we've wanted to stay relevant, which is good. Right, and, and I think we've had a good teams, and you're trying to build around that. But at the same time, I think we have to change part of the philosophy too. That look what happened with Tampa when they brought in, in Brady and brought on those vets. The Rams did something very similar not too long ago, 
when they brought in Stafford and some of those guys. Two other teams that actually made the Super Bowl and weren't afraid to blow it up was Philly yeah. and San Francisco. Right, both of those teams, they got there and they said, "Hey, Jimmy G's not good enough. We're gonna we're gonna go back to the to the well." Now they didn't hit on Trey Lance, but they did get lucky with, you know, their their mm-hmm. next guy. Uh, you look at Philly. Philly gets there with Foles and and they try to do it with, once the next year. They say, "Hey, this isn't enough. We're gonna go and draft a guy." You know, and they rebuild that way. Do you think that's something that? Uh, I think us as fans are looking at saying something has to change. I know next year it's probably not going to be likely looking at the contract situation and, and they're trying to run it back with the coaching staff. But do you think that maybe sometimes you got to jump in the deep end and make a change? Do you think that's something that we would, would be willing to do in the future? Yeah, and that that's going to be uh, – thanks for the call, Zach. Um, appreciate that. And, and like I said with the caller that we had from, from Russia, thank you for um, – you know, obviously the the dedication it takes to to be a Cowboy fan, long distance, tough to be a Cowboy fan anywhere. You know, right now, but when, when the you know when you have so much disappointment like that. But uh, sorry, guys, um, dealing with like a six year cough here. Um, I think that blowing it up, it all comes down to the quarterback. You know, it comes down to that contract, and I think that will be. The sign of what what they do and you know i know that jerry was asked probably like 20 times here uh, today different reporters trying to ask about <laughs> contracts and he's just not budging on it not giving a whole lot of what they're going to do with Dak. i think that's going to uh, kind of be the the determining factor on anything on what they do um moving forward or, or going backwards or starting over or whatever so <clears throat> if they don't re- restructure him then this is going to be kind of a, you know, this is it. Put all the eggs in, in next year's basket. Um, <clears throat> same with McCarthy, same with Dak. But I don't think that uh, you're going to see them just kind of blow it up. I just don't see that happening for this team. All right. Struggling here at the end. <laughs> Got to get through. Great great show for everybody. For Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. We will see you Thursday, different time, 1230. Darren Woodson's going to be joining us. So that's why we're moving up to 1230. We will see you then on Cowboy Storyline. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about that?